1,200 species. From my collecting, that's how many endangered and or threatened species are in the United States. Fun fact, I like animals a whole lot. And crazy thing, I live in the United States. Wahoo. This is why I wanted to start collecting this data. Unfortunately, human beings can be awful, and this means the environment is being affected. But recently, in retrospect, we've realized that a lot that humans do is really bad and can, believe it or not, harm the animals, creepy or cute, that we love so much. I mean, just look at some of the little dudes that were or are being harmed by oil spills, deforestation, overhunting, commercial exploitation of species, invasive species. I'm gonna stop there. Hey Jay, has this problem gotten better or worse? I am so glad you asked. But hold your horses, because this is not as simple as it seems. Bear with me here, because as well as math, I have to talk about the government and history for the backstory of this. We didn't really start recording the endangered species of the good old USA until 1966 when the Endangered Species Preservation Act was passed. This gave permission to the Secretary of the Interior to classify a species as endangered, threatened, or anything else. And of course, 1966 isn't the best year to collect my data from, as it is literally the year the list started. So 1967 is where we begin our species tallying journey. Also, heads up, I would have collected data for the whole world if that was 1. reasonable, 2. possible, and 3. I wasn't losing it over getting 57 years of this country's data through the Federal Register already. Look at all these numbers. I'm forcing y'all to look at them because this data collecting took me like 14 days to collect. A stupidly long time. I know. It's a lot of stuff in a box and honestly, a little overwhelming to look at. Don't worry about that. Let's just get to the scatter plots. Now, from this graph, we can see that the change in points is a really, really good sign. With the polynomial degree was the best graph for me to use. Displaying the ups, up and down of species that are being placed on the list, as well as having the regression results closest to one. You see the dots sticking out at random? That is the data from 1970, marking a year where 102 species were marked endangered. This most likely was from the process of catching up from the many years of previous data missed. I searched and searched and searched and could not find anything that would lead to this many animals being marked as such, especially when most of them are clams. This graph is pretty good. When I extrapolated it six years in the future, it stayed true to the start and seemed to come out to around 35 species. Sadly, with the current state of the world, even with the progress being made as a country, I do foresee that prediction being accurate. But this graph can only be used for so long. I believe that the validity ends at the year to 2045, where the number, where the number beco becomes the highest it has been since 2016 at 78. In 2045, it reaches about 60 to 65 species, and having that drastic of a jump from numbers in 2024 being in the 20s to only about two decades later it being in the 60s, it feels unrealistic, even for the condition of the world. Sorry, Graph. Why is this information useful, and to who? The changes in the number of endangered slash threatened species is something that environmental scientists and conservationists would want to keep an eye on. Having the data and equation to see an approximate on how bad the issue is in the years that it gets worse or better can alert them on what is influencing that sway. If this pattern can be understood, the population of other species may be saved or deaths could be slowed. Now, as silly as this presentation was, this topic is seriously important, and if I wasn't on a time limit, I would probably talk a lot longer on this. Thank you for listening!